Hi there, this is Craig Back from StopDrinkingExpert.com. Welcome to my video blog today and talking about weight gain. And the big question that I get asked is, how does alcohol affect your weight? Um, it's an interesting subject, this one, because like with everything else with alcohol, it's a bit of a deception, it's an illusion. And there's a lot of misinformation around this subject. Uh, and that's driven by two factors generally. Firstly, it is confirmation bias. And that is basically that we seek the information that we want to hear generally. And as drinkers, we don't want to hear that alcohol makes us fat. We want to hear the opposite. We want any sort of good news we can get to validate what we're doing. And the reason we want this is because intrinsically at our core, we know that what we're doing is wrong. There is no logical justification for drinking poison for fun. And so we have to delude ourselves and also buy into the illusion to justify it, for, to make sense. So we look for the stories that validate what we believe. And you've probably experienced this yourself when, if you've ever had a health condition, if you've ever found uh, you know, a mole in a place that wasn't there before, or you found a lump, or you found this, or you found that, or you've had a cough for like six weeks, and you, you go on the internet, you go onto Dr. Google, and you put in your symptoms, and you, it tells you instantly you're about to die. It always does, doesn't it? I mean, GPs must hate Google for that reason. You know, go back 10, 15 years, 20 years, we, we didn't have that. We'd have to go to a GP and they would tell us what was wrong with us. Now, we sit in front of Google and we look at the screen and it says, you've got cancer, you're about to die, no matter what you put in. And this is called confirmation bias because basically we're searching for our biggest fear. We're not searching accurately. We're searching for what it could be in the worst case scenario. Now with drinkers, it's the other way around. We're looking for the good news. We're looking for any sort of story that validates what we're doing. So that's the first factor to this. The second factor is that the alcohol industry knows this and it, it kind of um, leans on this element of human behavior and it peddles these fake stories, these fake good news stories about alcohol through their public relations department. And these are the stories that you see coming up on your Facebook newsfeed. Red wine proven good for your heart. Alcohol helps you lose weight. Alcohol helps you do this. People who drink every day are more successful. These stories are propagated by the alcohol beverage producing industry. And they are devious, they are dangerous, and they are evil. Now, here's the truth about alcohol and how it affects your weight. The fact is, alcohol is a fuel. It's like gasoline. Uh, that's all it can be used for in the body. It has absolutely no nutritional value. So it's purely and simply a fuel. The body has to do something with it. Unfortunately, it's limited to do one thing, burn it. It can't store it as fat. It can't take the excess alcohol and store it away as fat. Now you might think, well, that sounds great. And you might think that's a benefit, but it's actually not. Let me explain a little bit more. So if alcohol can only be used as a fuel and it's got to go somewhere, then that means that it is burnt first. So as long as your body has a constant source of fuel, alcohol, then it won't burn the food, the food in your stomach, in your digestive system. That will be converted to fat because there is no other option. It's got to go somewhere. It can't just stay in your stomach or in your intestines permanently. It has to go somewhere. It has to do something with it. So it turns it into fat. So what this means is the human body burns about one unit of alcohol per hour and a bottle of wine has about 10 units in it. So if you drink a bottle of wine on an evening and have a meal, then for 10 hours after you finish that bottle of wine, your body's going to burn alcohol as fuel. It means that everything else you eat, that big meal you had, the dessert, and then the snacks later because you got peckish, all that's just going to be processed by your body and stored as fat. Now, <laughs> it gets even worse, I'm afraid. Now, if that wasn't enough, the problem is alcohol is poison. It shouldn't be in your system. And when it does get in your system, it interferes with very important functioning abilities of the body. For example, the absorption of vitamins and minerals. So if you're drinking regularly, it could be preventing you absorbing vitamin C, vitamin B12, potassium, something like that. Now, the body, when it detects a serious deficiency, will not 
have a conversation with you about it. It won't say, hey, look, we're short of this. You better go and do this. The subconscious has a prime directive. Sorry to go a bit Star Trek on you, but it does. And the prime directive is stay alive at all costs. So the subconscious doesn't waste time debating with you. It doesn't want your opinion on this. It just releases those chemicals into your brain that make you hungry and tell you it's time to go eat because there's a deficiency. Now, because you're drunk, because you're intoxicated, instead of listening to what your body wants, maybe a banana if it's low on potassium, maybe you're just dehydrated and you need water. Instead of listening to what your body really wants, you just go and order takeout. Or you go through the cupboards and you pull out the chocolate from Christmas or you pull out the chips and dips or you fry a bacon sandwich. You do something unhealthy. And so you eat. But the problem is the alarm that was triggered in your brain in the first place, low potassium, hasn't been switched off because you're still not absorbing the vitamins and minerals. So your brain doesn't switch off the chemicals that make you feel hungry. It doesn't say, OK, we're satisfied now, switch those off. We're all sorted because the problem it tried to correct is still there. And so what happens is you eat more food than you normally would. You make poor choices with your food and you get hungry more often and you just you just keep eating. And this food sits in your stomach, in your digestive tract, gets turned into fat. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, drop me an email via the website www.stopdrinkingexpert.com.